joining us now from the campaign trail in Alabama, former Vice President Joe Biden. Mr. Vice President, congratulations on your victory in South Carolina last night. What do you think it does for your campaign? Well, I think it's a big boost. I think it, uh, it uh, starts the, uh, a real comeback, uh, and I think it, uh, you know, we, uh, we picked up a lot of delegates, practically speaking, and we now have amassed more popular vote than anyone running for the nomination, but we have a long, long way to go. This is a marathon. Well, let me ask you about that, because now you face Super Tuesday in just 48 hours, where 34 percent of all the delegates, delegates will be allocated. And frankly, you're at a big disadvantage going into there. Let me count, count the ways. You haven't held a rally in a Super Tuesday state in more than a month. In California, Bernie Sanders has 23 offices and more than 100 staffers. You have one office, and your campaign won't say how many staffers. And while Sanders is spending $13.5 million on TV ads for Tuesday, you started running your first ad this week. Question, if you get clobbered on Super Tuesday, what does that do to your campaign? Well, it surely doesn't help, but there's a lot of big states coming up after that. Florida and Georgia and Pennsylvania and Michigan. I mean, a whole range of states that still are, are in, the, in, in play. But I don't—look, I'm not a pundit, Chris, I, and I'm not being a wise guy. I mean, I'm being deadly earnest. I feel good about uh, where we are, and I think ultimately people are now beginning to focus on, uh, on, the, on the opposition and the way that they focused on in the Democratic Party, the way they've been focusing on me for a long time. And I I think that uh, I think it's about the message, and I think that people know who I am. Although I've been outspent 41 to one, I think it was, or 40 to one, in South Carolina and other places. I think we've now begun to raise money. Nothing like they have raised. We've raised about 18 million dollars this month, just five million overnight. Uh, um, and so I, I think things are picking up, but we'll see. Uh, talking about money, Mayor Bloomberg has bought TV time on two networks tonight to deliver a primetime address, three-minute primetime address to the nation. How do you compete with that? On your show. <laughs> <laughs> by doing as much of the free press and earn media as I can. I'm being serious. Um, and uh, look, I, I, I think that, you know, money can buy a lot, but it can't, uh, it can't uh, hide your record and it can't make you something that you are or are not. And, uh, uh, you know, I'm, it, it, so I just think one, one of the best things I think happening is now, Mike, who's a solid, serious guy, is in the debates now, and uh, we're able to discuss the differences we have. But I think the Democratic Party is looking for a Democrat, not a socialist, not a former Republican, a Democrat, uh, to, uh, to be their nominee and to uh, bring the country together in a way that I've been able to do my whole career. Speaking of Democratic Socialists, how damaging do you think Bernie Sanders would be on the top of the ticket, both in terms of trying to beat Donald Trump and also for Democrats down ballot? Well, look, if he's a nominee, I will support him, but I think it makes it very difficult down ballot, and this is no great secret to anybody. You can't run as an independent socialist, now a democratic socialist, uh, and do particularly expect to do very well in states we have to win, like North Carolina, like Georgia, like Florida, like Texas, like Pennsylvania, et cetera. And so, I, I, look, I believe that if I'm on the top of the ticket, we'll win back the Senate and we'll keep the House. I went in last time in 2018 to 24 purple states. We won 41 House seats. We won governor's seats. I was invited in. I don't know that they invited uh, the uh, Bernie Sanders to come in, not because he's a bad guy, but he comes from a different perspective. Look, the people aren't looking for revolution. They're looking for results. Everybody talks about a revolution. Let's get results. And the idea that Bernie's going to be able to come up with $60 trillion in 10 years to do the things he wants, there's no, there, there's really no path there. And I can get that done on health care by building on Obamacare with a Biden Medicare option in it. I can do this in terms of Ebola, I mean, excuse me, in terms of dealing with the issues that relate to what we put together when we faced the pandemic of Ebola. I've had the experience of doing it. I can do this in terms of bringing together the world with regard to climate change and so on. So I, uh, this is, these are things that have been in my wheelhouse, things that I've done, and I have a record of real success. Bernie doesn't have much of a record at all of accomplishment in the United States Senate or the United States Congress. He's done a few things. 
he's worked with John McCain on, on, on health care, excuse me, on veterans issues and post offices and other things, but I've passed big legislation. I'm able to cross the aisle and I'm able to get things done. Now, Mr. Vice President, if Sanders is such a threat to the Democratic Party and the possibility of Democratic majorities, should all of the centrists uh, get together? And you, you have a pretty clogged lane. There's you, there's Bloomberg, there's Buttigieg, uh, there's Klobuchar. Should you get together after Super Tuesday and whoever is in the lead amongst you, whoever has the most delegates, all the others say, we're going to get out and we're going to support this moderate to go one on one against Bernie Sanders? Well, you know, it's kind of interesting on your show for me to be called a moderate, Chris. Uh, I know it's 13 years since I've been on it, but I've never been called a moderate on your show before, and I don't consider myself. I consider a, a, myself a relative a, moderate. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, you, you know what I mean. <laughs> and I, I'm not been criticizing you. I'm making the point that I have a very, very, very progressive record, and the issue is what we what, what can get done. And look, it's not for me to tell any other candidate they should get out of the race. They'll know whether or not they remain viable, whether they have a chance, and I'm confident that that the the the, uh, the primaries that are coming up and the ones that follow are going to winnow that field and uh, and I think people will do the right thing but I'm not going to presume to tell well, anyone. Well, let me ask you a question directly then. If Super Tuesday ends and there's another so-called moderate or centrist who's leading you in delegates, would you consider getting out to give them a clear path against Sanders? Well, look, I, I'm not going to I'm not going to speculate on any of those kinds of things. I think we're going to do well. I know why I'm running. I'm not running against any of the Democrats. I'm running against this, what uh, what our present president is doing and what he stands for. And uh, I'm going to stay in my message. I've started off saying we have to restore the dignity and honor of the office and the soul of this country to gain respect in the country and around the world. We have to deal with bringing reestablishing the middle class and bringing everybody along, including the poor having an opportunity to get up, and as well as we have to unite the country. And I used to be criticized for saying all these, all those three things when I started. Now you know most Democrats are saying the same thing. Who can get it done? Who can put this country together? Who can restore the dignity and honor of the country, from my perspective, anyway? Mr. Vice and I think that I'm best equipped to do that. Mr. Vice President, I don't especially like asking you about this, but it is an issue in the campaign, and that has been your sometimes shaky performance on the campaign trail. Here's a story that you told at least three times about Nelson Mandela. Take a look. I had the great honor of meeting him. I had the great honor of being arrested with our U.N. ambassador on the streets of Soweto trying to get to see him on Robbins Island. You now say you weren't arrested and it didn't happen in Soweto. You were at the airport in Johannesburg and you were stopped from going through the door for blacks. I guess the question is, were you confused or were you just trying to embellish a story? No. No, what I was trying to, what I was doing was talking about the fact that I was strongly opposed to apartheid. When we landed in the first, we were going to Soweto, actually, we landed in Johannesburg, and uh, the, the Afrikaners took me off the plane, took me in one direction, wanted me to go through a white-only door, and in fact, I wouldn't move. I said, everybody else is going through another door. I'm going with the, with, with the, with the, with the black delegation that I came with. They said, no, you can't. And I said, well, I'm standing here. I'm not going to move and they would not let me move anywhere so I guess I should have said I was I was I was detained uh, I was not able to move forward to what they finally did was they went out and they cleared out a baggage claim area took us all up through uh, through the baggage claim area up and cleared out a restaurant look and if anybody wonders whether or not what I said about uh, my my desire and my my adamacy about apartheid you've covered it go back and look at joebiden.com and take a look at the no no at, you're right at, at what's happened in the your, your record is clear. Anyway. Let, let me ask you, though, here's something else you said this week. Take a look. I'm a Democratic candidate for the United States Senate. Look me over. If you like what you see, help out. If not, vote for the other guy. Give me a look, though, okay? You haven't run for the Senate since 2008. What happened there? No, the content. 
The context was, I said to everybody, I said, look, I'm going to say the same thing that I've always said. Like I used to campaign in Delaware, I'd say, I'd knock on the door, I'd say, my name is Joe Biden, Democratic candidate for the United States Senate. Look me over. If you like me, help me out. If not, vote for the other guy. That's the a sentence I repeated throughout making the case, and I said, and I'm here now to ask you all to look me over. It was in the context of how I said I ran, because the context is also was that, you can, as was pointed out by my by Cedric and others of my campaign and, and, and how I ran when I ran for the Senate was people will not, they expect you to ask them. You have to earn their vote. That was the context of that. All right. Final question in this regard. President Trump went after you about this at CPAC yesterday. Take a look at what he said. Joe's not going to be running the government. He's just going to be sitting in a home someplace. <laughs> and people are going to be running it for him. Your response to the Is president. Is that the stable sir. genius saying that? <laughs> oh, give me a break. God love him. I, I, I'm going to resist saying what I feel like saying. No, go ahead. I, I don't don't resist it. Go ahead, Mr. Vice no, President. No, 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 no. I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to try to, uh, uh, you know, assign names and insults to the stable genius. Uh, this is a guy who doesn't know what he's doing. He doesn't know how to run the country. He, he is making us more unsafe the way he's responding to the coronavirus. He has done virtually nothing well that I can see. And so I I can hardly wait to debate him on stage. I want, to, I want people to see me standing next to him and him standing next to me. <laughs> we'll see who's sleepy. <laughs> Mr. Vice President, thank you. Thanks for your time. Please come back in less than 13 years, sir. All right, Chuck. Thank you very much. Uh, all right. Uh, it's Chris, I but mean, anyway. Chris. I just did Chris. <laughs> no, no, I, I, I just did Chuck. I tell you what, man, and these are back to back. Anyway, no, it's I don't okay. Know how you do it early in the morning too. Sa safe, tra you, safe travels on Appreciate the campaign it. trail. Thank you, sir. Thank you.